go into that press, pressing, trapping Havoc style was the way to go for you? I just always liked the press, uh, even going back to when I played in high school and in college. Uh, I was fortunate to work for quite a few coaches that uh, had uh, a, a lot of know-how about pressing. You know, sometimes it comes down to you know, who your influences are. And I worked for three coaches specifically that I think were terrific, are terrific pressing coaches. Keith Dambrod at University of Akron, Oliver Purnell I worked for at Dayton and at, and at Clemson. And uh, those Clemson teams, to me, were as good a pressing teams uh, as any in the country. And then uh, I worked for Billy Donovan at Florida as well, who everybody knows is, is a great pressing coach. Shaka, Dustin DePirac, Bloomington Herald Times. I guess did it, it also help that you know, the press was kind of already kind of established at VCU before you even got there. Anthony Grant read, ran a lot of it, and even I think Jeff Cable, I think, did as well. You had guys that kind of knew how to do it to a degree. Did you have to change a lot, or was it kind of already established they knew how to play it? Yeah, they, they didn't press the same way that we, we press now, and not, not taking away from anything that they did, but we, we did. We had to install, you know, a completely new pressing system. But I think to, 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 uh, to your point, there were some – some guys that had some pressing concepts already built in. Anthony Grant did a terrific job, uh, you know, getting guys to play hard, getting guys to extend uh, ball pressure, and that's what pressing is all about. So when we got there a few years ago, uh, we, we put in our presses, and we've kind of built the system from there and continue to evolve it. Shaka, Paul Woody from the Times of Fashion Richmond. Uh, your players – seem to have no self-doubt. They seem to never think that they're going to lose. And you talk about playing aggressive, confident, and loose. How do you instill that in them? Is it something that starts in the recruiting process when you see it in players, or do you develop it once they get there? We talk about it a lot. And, you know, basketball is a game that, that these guys have been playing for a long time. They've made winning plays for years and years and years. But now they find themselves on this, this grand scale of being in the NCAA tournament. Uh, but that shouldn't change anything. It, it, nothing should, should change in terms of what they, they want to do. And uh, I know we're playing the Hoosiers, but I'll reference the movie Hoosiers that you know, they talked about in that movie. Uh, the baskets are still 10 feet. You know, the court's still the same length. Uh, nothing has changed. So I think for our guys, we just, as coaches, we try to instill a lot of confidence in them let them know that they can go play their game. Our number one rule on the court is to play hard. And if guys follow that rule, which I think our guys do a pretty good job of doing, then I'm all about you know, allowing them to, to let their hair down offensively and go attack. Chris, Chris Kowalczyk around the horns. Uh, Coach, uh, how much, when you guys are playing, have a short turnaround like you do tomorrow, how much of an advantage is there to playing a unique style? Well, we'll see tomorrow how much of an advantage there is. I think uh, one of the reasons, there's a lot of reasons that we play the way we do, but one of the reasons we play uh, with our style is because it's different than what teams are used to practicing against in their own practices and playing against uh, throughout the course of their schedule. You know, in the, in the case of Indiana, it's a Big Ten schedule and, and you know, whoever they played in a non-conference play. So in theory, uh, you know, our style is something that will be new for them to see tomorrow. Uh, you know, sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't work out. But we practice the way that we play every single day. And, you know, again, in theory, that should be an advantage for us. Uh, you know, hopefully our guys can uh, turn theory into practice. Bob Kravitz with the Indianapolis Star. To follow up on that, Greg Marshall from Wichita State was saying that they used six guys in, in practice and pressed. Is it possible for an opponent to really replicate what you guys do? Uh, not, uh, I mean, you can do certain things in practice, but uh, I don't think completely. Just like if we play against – a team that runs the Princeton offense, it's, it's, it's next to impossible for us to replicate that. We're just not a Princeton offense team. Uh, we can't replicate Cody Zeller. 
You know, he's one of the best big guys in the country. Uh, we, don't, we don't have anyone that we can throw out there on our scout team and say, hey, he's going to do what, what Cody Zeller does. So, uh, you know, I've never been big on that, you know, putting six guys out there. I, I understand the concept, but, you know, there's certain opportunities that are going to be there when there's five guys out there. And, and when you put a six guy, it's a little bit artificial. Um, but I think what that does is maybe addresses the mindset of, hey, there's going to there's gonna be people flying at you. There's going to be people all around. If we can break a press with an extra guy, then we're going to be fine uh, against five guys. It's much more mental than it is anything else. And, you know, for us, in certain games this year, that's, that's where we've had an advantage is, you know, mentally we've, we, we've really been able to get teams on their heels. If we can be the aggressors, uh, usually we have a really good chance to win. Coach, Ryan Karchi, Bloomington Herald Times. With you were talking about Cody Zeller and not being able to replicate him. How much of a, how much of a uh, tough matchup it, is it with, with the press and with him being able to run the floor so well? Yeah, he's, I'll tell you what, just watching him on tape, he's as good as any big, big kid that we've played in the three years I've been at VCU. And the scary thing is he's only a freshman. So, I mean, his future is, is extremely bright and, uh, He's going to do terrific things uh, at Indiana and beyond. Uh, we talked about him running the floor. We, we definitely can't give him easy baskets in transition. You know, I would guess that one of the things that they'll try to do is get the ball in quickly after makes or certainly on misses, get the ball outletted quickly, and then look for Zeller running to the rim. If you can get the ball in extremely quickly before the press is set up, then that's one way to, to beat pressure defensive teams. So for us, that's going to be a big point of emphasis. We have to get in the press quickly and make sure we get back and, and take away layups from him. Hi, Coach. Matt Calkins with the Columbian. Uh, the nation has gotten to know you and your program a little bit over the past couple years. Uh, you've spent a few days in Portland now. And uh, as of last night, there's a vacancy in the head coaching position with the Portland Trailblazers. So I guess the question is, uh, when are we going to see you throw your hat in that ring? Never. Um, you want me to elaborate on that? I was, <laughs> a couple of the fans last night after our game asked me that. And, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate that, that you know, there's, there's, in this business, there's, there's so much change in, in, in coaching. And, uh, you know, Nate McMillan's a phenomenal coach, but I, I guess in the NBA, uh, you know, that's commonplace for, for during the year, you know, coaches, uh, coaching jobs to change hands. But, you know, I'm in the moment right now at VCU, and uh, I love it at VCU. I'm, I'm just excited about our opportunity against Indiana tomorrow. Uh, the question was, is the NBA job appealing to a college coach? I can't really speak for anyone other than myself. I mean, certainly um, there's a lot of college coaches that, that have looked at the opportunity to go to the NBA. For me, I've never thought about it seriously. Um, you know, I'm just a 34-year-old guy at VCU. I played at Kenyon College. Uh, so it's, that kind of stuff is, like, unreal to me. I just try to do a good job with, with our team here, and, you know, hopefully things will work out. Coach Steve Andrus, WDRB TV. The Hoosiers attributed some of their success yesterday to getting out here early and their preparation. Curious, what stands out to you about your team's preparation, in particular, in these instances where you have a very short turnaround? Well, I, I think you know you can you can get there early and you can fall flat on your face, or you can you know get there late and, and not play well. So I, I don't think it's so much about you know, when you get there, uh, for us, maybe for other teams, uh, it is. You know, I think in the book, The Art of War, it says the first uh, side to the battlefield normally wins. So uh, it, it's, it's all about how you look at it, but it, it comes down to having your guys, when you get on the, f on the floor, locked in on what they need to do. And, uh, you know, for us, when we got to uh, Portland, the first practice we had, we practiced over at, at – Portland State, I thought was just okay. And, but then I thought about it when the practice got done. And, you know, it's a five and a half hour flight. 
Our guys had been laying around in the hotel for a while. So, you know, it's again, it's all about once you take the floor for the game, are you in the right frame of mind? Are your guys ready to execute the game plan? With the short turnaround, there's so many things that you try to cram into your guys' heads, uh, especially with a Tom Crean coach team. I mean, they're probably putting in 10 new plays as we speak. But uh, we, we can't know everything that they do. We just have to have three, five, seven key aspects of what they do that we're trying to take away. Shaka Dustin DePirak again, Bloomington Herald Times. Since you already got a coach question, uh, you've obviously been mentioned for various actual college jobs, Illinois among them. I guess one, have you given any thought to any of that? And number two, is it a, is it a distraction, I guess, to hear your name start coming up when you're getting ready for an NCAA tournament run? No and no. I have not given any thought to it. And no, it's not a distraction. Uh, it's pretty easy, actually, while you're still playing, just to focus on the task at hand. And I, we talk to the guys all the time about being in the moment, you know, letting go of the past and certainly not focusing on the future because you don't have control over those things. I, you know, there's a lot of things that, that, that in the past that we certainly would love to go back and change. I think all of us here. And there's a lot of stuff in the future that we, we'd love to, to mold and shape and control. But all we can control is what we have today. And that's been our motto as a team all year long is to own today, focus on today. And, uh, you know, today is all about preparing for Indiana. Tomorrow is about playing Indiana. And then we'll go from there. Uh, Shaka, Paul Woody again. Uh, Troy Daniels uh, said that in practice, you're always telling the players that you're, they're great and it's something you're trying to instill in them. So are your practices just sort of big love-ins filled with uh, pats on your back and everything, or do you have to do it in a variety of ways? I wouldn't call them love-ins. I would say, you know, I'm a pretty positive guy, but I'm also very uh, energetic and very demanding of our guys. I think we talked about this before, Paul. You, you know, you, you're trying to get the best out of your players. You're trying to get them to where maybe they don't know that they can go. Uh, sometimes that requires a pat on the back. Sometimes it requires a hug. Sometimes it requires a, a swift kick in the butt. So you just got to do what the, what the situation uh, requires. Uh, I think we've got a lot of young guys on our team, and even someone like Troy, who's a junior, barely played at all. He was sitting and watching last year at this time as we were making our NCAA tournament run. Uh, so we've got to help those guys understand how good they can be, and particularly Troy. I, I'm always telling Troy I think he's the best shooter in the country. And I want him to believe that. I want him to, 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 to feel that. And well, last, uh, last night he tied the school record for, for, for made threes in a season. So I think there's something to you know, breathing life into these guys and, and letting them go out there and play. Bob Kravitz with the Indianapolis Star. You've given us the first Sun Tzu reference of the NCAA tournament. Uh, have you uh, rolled out any, I know you collect quotations, or I read that somewhere. Any particular quotations that you've, you've rolled out in particular for this, for this postseason? I use them pretty sparingly with the team, actually. You know, those guys get tired of that stuff. They, they, they're not as into quotes as me. You know, you learn in coaching. It's not about you. It's about the guys you're working with. So, I, no, I haven't rolled too many out. Uh, there's a, we joke around in our coaching staff. We use different quotes. Uh, I think there's a Shakespeare quote. Everyone wants to talk about the past. The Shakespeare said, what's won is done. Uh, soul's joy lies in the doing. So uh, we've used that at times because everyone wants to talk about last year's Final Four run, but that's done. That's over. It's all about now. Shaka, uh, Mike Acker, Gary Post. Um, can you elaborate that on that a little bit, talking about getting over the run from last year? You, you said you're moving on. It's in the past. Yeah, we're over it. I mean, it's uh, no disrespect to, to the media, but that's, it's pretty much the media that he continues to bring it up, which is fine. I mean, everyone's got a job to do, and it's, it's a compelling story. But, you know, as a team, we moved on a long, long time ago. We, you know, the guys all have their rings. They all have, uh, you know, when they go in our arena at home, there's a banner up there that says 2011 Final Four Houston. But, you know, nobody really sits around in their room and dwells on it or, or 
you know, is watching tapes of last year. It's all about the opportunity that we have now. And there's 32 teams after tonight that have the chance to win a national championship, 32 teams. And there's 300 and some teams in, in Division I basketball. So to be around, to be alive at this time of year in the NCAA tournament is such a special golden opportunity. So why would we take any of our energy and focus on the past? Coach, Connor O'Gara, Indiana Daily Student. Um, Bradford talked about how uh, last year you guys had a lot more offensive playmakers and how this year um, you guys are really focused a lot more on defense. Just how much better is this team at implementing your system? Defensively? Yeah, much better. I think we're much better defensively than we were last year. Last year's team could be good on defense at times, and we were at times, but nowhere near the level of focus game in, game out for a 40-minute period uh, as this year's team has because we're, we're not as good of a shooting team. Uh, we, we have our, our stretches where we, where we score really well, where we, where we shoot really well, uh, but we really depend on our pressure defense. We depend on our ability to stop teams in the half court, and I think that's what's allowed us to win 29 games. We have time for about two more questions. Coach Steve Andrus again from WDRB. Just curious, with the success your conference has had with you guys and George Mason, are you surprised you haven't gotten the benefit of the doubt on Selection Sunday as a league that maybe the A-10 in the Mountain West has gotten at this point? I'm not surprised. A little bit disappointed about that. I think Drexel's a team that uh, definitely deserved to be in the NCAA tournament this year. Uh, I'm not in the selection committee, so I didn't have a vote. Uh, but anytime you have the type of season they had, you win 19 games, you, you, you finish first place in a very, very competitive league. Uh, you know, I think they should have been included, but they weren't. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's what happened to us as a league. We only got one team this year. I do think if you look over the past, you know, several seasons, uh, the teams from our league that have been given the opportunity in the NCAA tournament have really taken advantage of it and, and, and done well. So, you know, hopefully in the future we'll, we'll continue to do better. We'll continue to get more teams in the tournament. And, you know, I think as we get teams in the tournament, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to, to, to advance. Okay, that'll wrap up our press conference. Next up, we'll Thank have you. Indiana. Thanks, Coach.